So as diseases like Parkinson's are on the rise, highly regenerative organisms like planarians can kind of show us the regeneration mechanisms. Um, and so in my project, I took velvet bean and caffeine and uh, put planarians in there to see if it would re reduce their uh, regeneration time. And my hypothesis was correct that it did. Um, and so these extracts can be used um, uh, for studying neuro for in stem cell therapy and studying neurodegenerative diseases in the future. My project was on the impact of age and generosity um, in relation to COVID risk behaviors and perceptions. And overall, I wanted to see whether or not both age or generosity behaviors such as altruism or compassion had any effect on how people acted during the COVID-19 pandemic. And overall, I found that generosity had no effect, but age did have an effect. My project examined the impact of therapeutic horseback riding on the heart rate variability of children with disabilities. Within a sample field of children with disabilities, we tested their heart rate variability while therapeutic horseback riding, in which we were able to find that there is an increase in parasympathetic acti activity, as well as an overall increase in heart rate variability, which correlates to their occupational performance capabilities, which helps to, to explore the impact of the early intervention strategy as a means to decrease mortality rates. Well, my project was looking at um, an oncogenic pathway. There's a drug that's been developed that inhibits this oncogenic pathway, basically meaning that the pathway, when it's turned on too much, develops tumors. Um, this drug is a little bit too long, so the purpose of my project was to look at shorter mo models of the longer drug. And um, basically what I did is I modeled the shorter molecules and then um, I simulated docking to a regulatory unit. And from that, I learned that there was a 9-amino acid uh, truncated model that had the same effects as the longer one, um, but is predicted to have less side effects. The purpose for our experiment was to determine the most efficient voltage for using to produce hydrogen during electrolysis. We used a thing called a Hoffman's apparatus, which you would run electricity through and it would produce um, hydrogen on one side and then oxygen on the other side. Uh, the, the results of our project was we, we discovered that eight, that eight volts had the highest efficiency to, pr to produce hydrogen.
My project this year, I used a bioprinter to filter out nitrates from contaminated water. I created a sphere, a grid, and a funnel design using an online program called Tinkercad. From this, I uploaded it to the bioprinter and used chlorella as a bio ink to take out these nitrates from contaminated water. Um, from my results, I learned that the grid structure of chlorella was the most efficient at removing nitrates from water. Our project was to assist Mountain View Elementary School in improving their bathroom equipment and allowing for more independence within their facilities. Through our design process, we developed our prototypes and through observations and evaluations, we developed our prototypes into the solutions that we implemented. We utilized the engineering principles and found that they have real world solutions in elementary schools and daycare. The purpose of my project was to determine the biodegradability of four different materials in a saltwater solution. I did this by uh, inserting each material into a saltwater solution and then measuring their degradation process and effects that it had on them after the period. I found out that water absorption has a direct correlation to the degradation of different materials in water. My project was the effect of tension and compression on various different types of wood, and then relating that tensile and compressive strength data to strength to weight ratio and strength to cost ratio. To do this, I uh, used a vice, and I compressed the. I obviously used the vice to compress the wood, and then to make it to put it under tension, I actually used steel zip ties to strap the wood into the vice and then pull it apart. I tested oak, pine, and poplar, and as far as surprising results, well. I was surprised to find that pine actually beat out poplar in strength and strength to cost ratio. Since po um, even since poplar is a hardwood which would normally be expected to be stronger and it also costs less than pine. For my experiment, I did the effects of electromagnetic radiation on E. coli and Staphylococcus epidermidis. Uh, I chose E. coli and S. epidermidis because they are both highly researched and safe bacteria to work with. Um, to, do, to do my experiment, I exposed each bacteria to electromagnetic radiation through the effect using solenoids uh, for 15 minute and 30 minute intervals and then measured their development slash replication over uh, 51 to 60 hour time periods. 
Um, I learned from this experiment that there was um, a slight statistical effect in their development, but overall there was not a great effect. The purpose of this experiment was to compare the different heights of plants grown in an aquaculture setup and a terrestrial setup. So to achieve this, I grew plants in a fish tank for around a period of two months, and then I grew them in a terrestrial setup, which were a pot, for the same amount of time. At the end of the experiment, I compared their heights to see which grew taller. So I found that the terrestrial plants did grow taller, however, this could be due to they had more support for their roots, while the aquaculture plants had no support for their roots, and because they were bean plants, they ended up collapsing due to having nothing to support them.